Welcome to Melt, I'm Suresh Venkat. This week, we're turning the spotlight to food products company, ID Fresh Foods. Founded in 2005 by PC Mustafa and four of his cousins, the Bangalore-based company is known for its ready-to-cook products. They now sell their products across India, the Middle East, the United Kingdom, and the United States. To know more, we're in conversation with PC Mustafa, the CEO of ID Fresh Foods. How do you scale a ready-to-cook foods company? What is the next big growth opportunity? And what does it take to build a full-fledged FMCG brand? Let's find out as we get ready to melt with PC Mustafa. PC, welcome to Melt. Thank you. You've built a powerful brand with ID and yet for the first 10 years, you didn't do much marketing for the brand. Now, what does this say about the science of marketing itself? It's not true. We did spend a lot of money in marketing. Okay. And that money was spent in the right place. For, for startup at that, that time, the only thing that could that the brand could afford at that time or the product could afford at that time was the right product, right packaging and right placement and right distribution. We focused on these three aspects from day one. And according to me, for any startup, this especially FMCG startup, this is the most cost effective, cheapest way of marketing. So product packaging placement. Yes. And the fourth P of course is promotion or advertising. Yes. We didn't spend money on, uh, on promotion and advertising at that time because we were not able to afford it. But Product, hero product, right packaging to give that experience to a consumer and the right placement in the stores Okay, and the distribution. One of the consistent claims you've made ever since day one is that your products are preservative free. Yeah. Most consumers don't believe this because they believe that Atta is made, it's put into a package, it's put into a truck, it's sent to a shop and they buy it maybe a day or two or three days later. People say it's never as fresh as homemade Atta. How do you convince your customers that your products are actually preservative free? That's the biggest challenge I'm facing even today. If you look at all our products, not just batter, all our products are 100% natural, no chemicals, no preservatives, nothing artificial in it. But then it's a very difficult claim for a customer to believe. If anything in a packaged form is considered as unhealthy by Indians. Mm -hmm. There are few reasons or few points that, you know, a customers could look at in, you know, to identify whether a product is free from chemicals and preservatives. One, they should read the ingredients first. In fact, we are starting a campaign very soon called Flip the Pack. Read the ingredients before you buy. One. Second, our factory is open for any, anyone. And the pack and product can be tested and they can, they can come and see the factory anytime. In fact, we took our factory live stream, mm -hmm. right? For the entire world to see. That was the first time any brand has taken this, right? Third, experience it yourself. And I say experience to yourself. If you keep ID products outside the refrigerator, you will witness a bomb blast in one, one day. <laughs> Literally. Okay. Because when, when I don't add chemicals and preservatives in the food, yeah. products get spoiled within one Very day. fast. Okay. Right? And it forms gas. Packet expands. Beyond a point, the packet will explode. explode. And another RTB in this case, is the shelf life. Our products come with seven day shelf life. Batter comes comes with seven, seven day shelf life. If I add a little bit of preservatives, I can get six month shelf life or one day shelf life. Mm -hmm. We don't claim that. We don't, we don't we don't have that. If my product my product will get spoiled after seven day. So these are the, the points. These are probably the in an easier way for a consumer to look at, right? Okay. But look at from my side. What are the benefits of me adding preservatives in the food? If I add a little bit of preservatives in the food, I will get better shelf life, reduce the cost, reduce the wastage, and reduce my sales and distribution cost because I don't have to go to every store every day. Mm -hmm. Thereby, I make much better profit, mm -hmm. right? And my the product can reach probably 10x the current number of stores today. Mm -hmm. If I add a little bit of preservative in the food, my employees won't know about it. My customers won't know about it, Ret uh, retailers won't know about it, regulatory authorities won't even care about it because it's, it's all approved. But I will not add chemicals and preservatives in the food because I stand for some values. Okay, so it's based on a yes. strong value system yes. and comes from personal morality. Yes. Okay, PC, you've built a profitable business from day one. You've focused on profits and you've raised multiple rounds of funding. I know you've said in past interviews that the funding is used to build factories and to yeah. do capital expenses. How important is personal branding for funding? 
to build yourself up as a brand, to build as a founder brand? I think to some extent it it plays a role. Uh, you know, especially after my MBA, I was uh, trying to sell Italy batter. Okay. That became a news, and people uh, you know looked up to us, and that's when you know we probably start getting some inbound inquiries for funding. Okay. Even uh, from a reputation perspective, it is important to build. Uh, you know, with investors. Again, what I've learned from investors is they don't invest in a business; they invest in you. Correct. So it's important for you so to. So hence, build. your personal reputation matters. Yes. Can you share some of the things you've done to build your personal reputation in terms of investor profile or, or investee profile? It's not like you know, crafting or building. It's a. It gets built over a period of time. You are your values, and your brand is your values. So the way we have, you know, designed the ID system or ID products and and its philosophy is my value system. The way, or my myself and my co-founder's value system is what we plan to uh, we we try to bring into the mm -hmm. product. And when we live those values, and when we share those values with the world, over a period of time, that brand gets built. And at the end of the day, you are the brand. So there is you, the personal brand, the value system, and your product brand. All of them are same for me. All of them are same for yeah. you. When it comes to advertising your products, what do you base your advertising on? What's your advertising philosophy? Great product, great experience, and innovation. Those are three areas that really worked for us. And that's enough to sell a product to consumers and build. It worked. ID is a case study. What kind of customers do you target, PC? I will probably uh, take my example. My wife. A homemaker, and she's an engineer design as well. She is a regular customer for ID. She is my right TG. Okay. My mom uh, has enough time to make batter at home. I've been trying to convince my mom to buy ID batter. Not she successful never, yet. Not successful yet. So she is not my TG. So I would say that's the that's the way we would we would we could define. Are they urban customers, tier two, tier three, metro, rural? So mostly, mostly our revenue comes from the. Uh, and uh, metro customers, okay. the top six cities contributes to ninety percent of my revenue. And do you have a strategy for uh, cracking difficult customers like your mothers, stay-at-home mothers, people who have the time and the interest in making their own batter products? It's a generation change. Okay. You know, whatever I try to convince my mom, she will still not buy ID batter. Only for that matter, any batter, right? She was making masala at home. Okay. The fresh spices she used to make at home, but in the last the last time I visited home, I was uh, surprised to see some masala powders, mm -hmm. packaged masala powders at home. Okay, I can see the change small happening. Change happening. Small there. change happening. Hopefully, she will buy ID better one day. Do you have a lot of customers from small towns, tier two, tier three cities? Ten percent of our revenue comes from those smaller markets. And do you see that as a growth area for you? Yes. And how are those customers different from, say, a customers in a Bangalore or a Bombay more, or a Delhi? More price conscious one, and uh, do not consider. Uh, you know, or do not value the value of time much compared to the urban customers. So thereby, marketing in those markets cannot becomes, be a based on value yeah, of time. Yeah. It has to be on something. It has to be else. on something else. What about taste? Do tastes vary from region to region, from big city to small city? Yes. So if you look at Italy as a as a business, forget about regions within Bangalore. Malaysia Italy is different from Kormagala Italy Correct. versus Whitefield Italy. Correct. Right. And that's the reason we don't sell idli. We give idli batter. A homemaker picks up a pack of idli batter, ferments the product up to their taste. Okay. Then she adds or he adds the masala or whatever into the batter into, into, into the product. Right. Adds her love. Make idli or dosa. And serve to the family. Okay. If idli comes out well, she gets a credit, not ID. If for some reason, if dosa is not crispy enough, he can blame it on me, the brand ID. So the way we have designed is we don't sell a finished product. We give them the base so that they can customize. So let me take this example again, explain to you what I meant with this, right? A customer in Kormangala would take the product, keep it outside the refrigerator for two hours, it gets to one level of fermentation. She makes her dosa. Okay. A customer in Malayalam in Bangalore will keep the product outside the refrigerator for one day. 
overnight make it really ferment okay to the level uh, to the level a chennai customer would prefer makes idli very soft idli my wife takes a batter directly from the fridge adds onion in it make uthappam out of it okay this is how the product is designed mustafa another important part of your uh, of your strategy is packaging your recent vada packaging won awards for innovation what is your approaching to packaging design so innovation plays an extremely important role at id the best way to build a strong brand and to stay out of competition is innovation mm. and for innovation common sense is the most important ingredient at id we looked at different aspects of innovation one such area of innovation is the packaging innovation and usually in any other companies packaging is used as a medium of transporting product from place a to place b at id we looked at four aspects of packaging one of course is to transport the product from place a to place b second is to communicate with the customers so if you look at our design language we use a particular design language a communication style to communicate to customers in their language mm-hmm. and make it a bit cocky as well in our communication so that's the second part we do in our packaging third our products are 100% free from any chemicals and preservatives i can't add chemicals and preservatives in the food mm-hmm. but then if i package a product without chemicals and preservatives it will not stay more than a day so thereby it is important for us to innovate the packaging to maintain the freshness of the product okay. for example if you look at a paratha packaging if you take paratha our products are again 100% natural no chemicals if you keep a product paratha in any packaging it will get spoiled within one day but we have designed our packaging worked with the partners without adding chemicals and preservatives in the food we designed packaging to maintain the freshness of the product mm-hmm. so the product stays for 7 seven days in a refrigerated condition so this is third aspects the fourth one and probably one of the most important aspects of brand building is to give a memorable user experience for a customer okay let me take the case of vada i didn't sell vada i sold vada batter the moment customers pick up a vada batter pack squeeze the vada batter vada batter comes out from the vada pack in the round shape and then you have cutter out there and you cut it it makes its hole a vada with the with a proper hole in the middle comes out from the vada pack this is a warm moment for a customer mm-hmm. customers will rem- remember this experience for their lifetime we use packaging design to give that memorable user experience for a customer so that they will remember the brand for their lifetime so these are the four aspects of packaging at id one of the temptations many startups face is to hire a celebrity as soon as they get funded sometimes vcs push them to do this as well you have resisted that temptation how have you resisted it our package our product is a hero you don't need an actual hero to sell it that's the product okay did you face pressure to hire celebrities or to get endorsements or to not to really grow in not a- really at all PC sometimes uh, customers don't exactly know what they want and you pride yourself on listening to your customers very very carefully so when a customer herself or himself doesn't know what exactly they want how do you listen to what they want and how do you translate that into a product when you run any business you will get customer complaints when you run a food business you will get a lot of customer mm-hmm. complaints when you run a fresh food business without adding chemicals and preservatives it is such a short life product you will get lot of customer complaints when I mean, you can you can prevent it to some extent but you can't completely avoid it mm-hmm. it's extremely important for us to listen to customers understand the problems and then use those problems to innovate okay at id we have a very senior officer who looks at every customer complaints mm-hmm. he doesn't have an assistant to look at it he goes through every customer complaints by himself ensure that all those customers who complained have become product loyalists or brand loyalists okay this is being done for the last 15 years mm-hmm. and by same person as a part time role he also handles the the role of ceo at id okay wow okay that's me okay right i look at every customer complaint you myself. have the time to look at every single customer complaint that's where i spend most most of my time okay right and from there we learn so let me now take the next example of the innovation that we have done during the early days this was in 2012 13 time we were getting lot of customer complaints from the market 
So in that, there's a cockroach in the ID batter. Cockroach in the ID batter, there was no way for me, for, for a cockroach to be there in the ID batter. Mm. For two reasons. One, we were trained to maintain our factory like an operation theater from day one. Mm -hmm. As clean, as hygiene as possible. Second, even if there is cockroach, it will get crushed, right, during the grinding process. And then we were confused what's happening. In the journey, we identified that the cockroach is there in the final product, but that is not coming from ID batter. It was actually, actually coming from vegetables kept next to the batter in the stores. We try to, you know, educate our customers to wash the pouch before they use. They won't. So effectively, we got so many such complaints of cockroach landing in the batter, which has actually come from vegetables kept in, in a store. This led to innovation. So we thought, why don't we innovate a packaging where customers don't have to transfer the pouch content into a vessel, mm -hmm. which means the packaging itself should become a vessel. Okay. So we designed the current batter packaging, which is a pillow pouch during packaging, transit and storage. But when you open the Ziploc, it becomes a vessel, right? So that you can make the idli or dosa directly, directly from the pouch. From the batter. So two problems solved. One cockroach problem solved, but most importantly, it added a lot of value for consumers. Mm -hmm. It gave them the experience. And third, it became my poster boy. So listening to consumers is extremely important in any business, okay. that, that especially in a fresh food business. And that's something that the CEO or the founder should do yes. herself or himself. PC, you have big plans for the dairy segment. Give us a brief introduction to what you plan to do in dairy. Anything which can be clean, which is free from any chemicals and preservatives, and which can be fresh, can be a good portfolio for ID as long as it makes money for us. Okay. Right. So thereby, we looked at two parts of dairy today, which is paneer and curd. And these are large businesses, large size businesses. And our focus would be on these two products mm -hmm. to build clean label product. Uh, this year, dairy will be 100 crore business for us. Okay. Right. And if you look at overall India market, a non-dairy player getting a hundred crore revenue from dairy is not an easy game. We will be the largest. With, with dairy giants who dominate yeah, the business. Yeah, yeah. So we are not a dairy player, but a non-dairy player get getting into hundred crore revenue is not an easy game. And that we already have achieved. Miles to go. And you also have uh, plans for international expansion. Yes. You tried entering the US market, you withdrew and you're entering again. What happened the first time around? We got two things wrong product size wrong and a packaging wrong. We are fixing those two issues. Okay. We did some experiment. In fact, we tried to upgrade our packaging when we launched the US market. Okay. That didn't really work out. What about your other markets in the Gulf, for instance? How are you doing there? Gulf market is doing very well for us. In fact, one third of my revenue is coming from UAE already. Okay. And just for one country, that's UAE alone, is giving me one third of IT's revenue. Okay. We are soon expanding to other markets. In fact, as, as we speak now, we are available in five countries already. Okay. My UAE, Oman, Saudi, Qatar and Bahrain. And you have to set up factories in each of these countries, I imagine. No, the advantage in GCC market, since we have the right transport infrastructure in place, mm -hmm. you can set up factory in one place and transport, transport it across. Quickly. So in this case, from Ajman factory, it goes to all the GCC countries, except Kuwait. Kuwait is quite far away. Other markets, we are able to take the product. PC, one of the things that happened during the lockdown, uh, from what I've read, is that ID Foods grew 300% in one year. Right? Am I right about that number, 300%? Ecom, yes. Ecom, yes. As a leader, what does it take to manage a company that's growing at that pace suddenly? COVID was a crisis. Mm -hmm. And every crisis, there's an opportunity. Okay. Right? We looked at the positive aspect of it. And then, it tried to help customers during those times. Mm -hmm. So... Let me tell you the story of initial days of COVID. All of us yeah. were in panic mode, right? There was a discussion, should we shut down the business? Should we stop the business for a, for a while? Because it is risky uh, to go to retailers, all of them, right? Out there, we had two choices. One was to take a break, ensure that everyone is safe. Second was to support our customers during the difficult time. Mm -hmm. We asked ourselves, if we can't help our customers when they need us, 
are we really driven for them in future we won't be and that's when we thought we should do our level best to support our customers when i say support our customers to make the products available now the stores were closed how do we make the product available we went, we went one step ahead we said we will set up stores for you in the apartments but i don't i didn't have the you know resources to make it happen i don't have technology to set up a vending machine so we did something called a trust shop in 600 apartment complex in mumbai we set up a trust shop in less than a month 600 shops in less than a month what we did we kept id products without any sales person there was uh, you know there was no camera it was not a vending machine there was no security personnel there was no no one watching except the almighty god customers were expected to walk in pick their favorite product mm-hmm. drop the money in the money box kept next to it or uh, you know upi payment to us our account nobody checking for the payment nobody has been monitoring what's happening mm-hmm. customers were expected to follow this process go home and have a healthy breakfast we thought it as an experiment but then it really helped us to create a strong brand that we are today what i've learned is the best way for someone to trust you is to trust them mm-hmm. so we trusted our customers during that difficult time and they now reciprocate that trust back did all of them pay did most of them pay so interestingly this channel was giving me better revenue per store than a retail store okay it was giving me better profitability per store than a retail store because you don't have any staff you don't have any overhead i don't have a staff i don't have wastage i don't have a retail margin customers were paying at mrp 97 percentage of the people paid money on day one okay that really helped us okay what does it say about the indian customer in this are trustworthy if you trust them all right pc final question for you what are the last thing two things that you cooked <laughs> <laughs> right question the wrong person i don't cook the last thing that i tried was papad okay and dal fry myself So is I, that something that your wife is okay with you not knowing how to cook in spite of being the CEO of a fresh food fine, business she's fine <laughs> there's no complaints on that front <laughs> difficult to manage but I'll handle all right pc thank you very much for talking to us at melt thank you i really enjoyed it thank you thank you and with that it's a wrap on this episode you can follow melt on social media the handle is ready to melt or simply log on to ready to melt.com if you'd like to follow me i'm at suvenk on x formerly known as twitter Till next week goodbye and thanks for watching <laughs>